One of the ways that fractions are different from whole numbers is that the same quantity can be represented by many different fractions. How is that? Well, here, let me draw you a picture of the fraction 3 halves. That's the fraction 3 halves. Why? Because each of these pieces is one half. And that length makes up three of them. Now I'm going to draw you a picture of the quantity six fourths. This number line shows the quantity six fourths. Why? Well, because each of these little pieces is one fourth, and this length combines six of them. One more picture. I'm going to draw you the quantity nine sixths. This length represents nine sixths because it takes six of these little pieces to make up a whole unit, and the line I've drawn represents nine of them. Now, you probably noticed something about those three line segments, and that is that they're all the same length. So that means that the fractions 3 halves, 6 fourths, and 9 sixths all represent the same length. We call fractions like this that represent the same length, or thinking in terms of counts the same quantity, equivalent fractions. And when we have equivalent fractions, we can write equal signs between them. In general, whenever we write equal signs between expressions, we mean that they represent the same number. So we're saying that these two fractions represent the same number, and that these two fractions represent the same number. Of course, that must mean that all three fractions represent the same number as each other. When we write a string of equal signs like that, we mean that all of the expressions involved represent the same number. How can we find a fraction equivalent to a given fraction? Well, let's look at another example. Let's say we have the quantity 2 thirds. And we want to know how many sixths that's equivalent to. Let's see, what would we like our unit to be? Let's say, let's make our unit a pound of hamburger. Right, so in this terrible drawing, this is one of those styrofoam trays you get at the grocery store. Let's see, I'm going to cut it into three equal parts. And then I'm going to take two of those parts. So, my unit is a pound of hamburger. The red shaded part represents two-thirds of a pound of hamburger. We want to know how many sixths. I'm going to draw another pound of hamburger and divide it into six equal pieces. And I want to look at, well, what is the same amount as my two-thirds of a pound? So I'm just going to copy that two-thirds of a pound and move it over into the other picture. So here's a copy of my two-thirds of a pound. And looking at that, I see that I've got one, two, three, four sixths of a pound. So two-thirds equals how many sixths? It equals four sixths. Obviously, we don't typically want to do that in terms of pictures, right? It works just fine with 3 and 6. If we had like 800 and 1200, we wouldn't want to do it this way. But what do we see? Notice, 
In order to get our sixths, we took each third and cut it into two equal parts. So we ended up with parts of such a size that it took twice as many to make a whole thing. And in particular, we cut each of the two-thirds that we were taking into two equal parts, and so we needed to take twice as many. So what did we end up doing? We ended up multiplying our denominator by 2, that is, needing twice as many pieces to make up a whole, but also multiplying our numerator by 2, that is, taking twice as many pieces. And that's how we could come up with 4 sixths without drawing the picture. In general, we can always find an equivalent fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same whole number. So if, for example, we wanted to say 7 fifteenths equals how many ninetieths? Well, let's see. I'm going to move this over to give myself room to work. What, am I, what can I multiply 15 by to get 90? This looks like a job for division. Remember, division gives us the missing number in a multiplication problem. So we take 90 divided by 15. If you happen to know this off the top of your head, cool. Otherwise, you can use the calculator. We take 90 divided by 15 is 6 which means that 15 times 6 is 90. Whatever we multiply the denominator by, we also have to multiply the numerator by. So our new numerator will be 7 times 6 is 42. So 7 fifteenths then we find is equivalent to 42 ninetieths. Now it's important to remember that equal signs work both ways. That is, if 7 fifteenths is equivalent to 42 ninetieths, then it's also the case that 42 ninetieths is equivalent to 7 fifteenths. But we can't get from 42 ninetieths to 7 fifteenths by multiplying the numerator and denominator by something. Because when we multiply by a whole number, well, the result is not smaller. But since equal signs work both ways, in addition to multiplying by the same whole number, we could also divide by the same whole number. But there's a trick, right? Remember, in the whole numbers, division sometimes doesn't work. So we can divide the numerator and denominator by the same whole number, provided both divisions result in whole numbers. A little bit of vocabulary will again be helpful here. If I give you two non-zero whole numbers, call them n and k, if the result of the division n divided by k is itself a whole number, n and k have a relationship that we can describe in several ways. We can say that n is divisible by k, or we can say that k is a factor of n. We can say k divides n, or finally we could say n is a multiple of k. So for, as an example of using these terms, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 3 is a whole number. So we can say 18 is divisible by 6. 6 is a factor of 18. 6 is a factor of 18, 
and 18 is a multiple of 6. Now, on the other hand, say we decided to take 18 divided by 5. And I'm going to use a calculator for this. 18 divided by 5. Uh, that's not a whole number. So we say that 18 is not divisible by 5, or 5 is not a factor of 18, or 5 does not divide 18, or 18 is not a multiple of 5. In order to determine whether two numbers have this relationship, just do the division and look and see if the result is a whole number. What does that have to do with what we were doing? Remember we were saying we can divide the numerator and denominator by the same whole number, provided both divisions result in whole numbers. If we have a number that divides each of two other numbers, we call it a common factor or a common divisor. So we can restate that rule that we just mentioned as saying we can divide the numerator and denominator by any of their common factors. So, for example, say we have the, say we have the fraction 40 over 180, 40 hundred-eightieths. Well, we can get an equivalent by dividing the numerator and denominator by any factor that those two numbers have in common. I suspect I could divide each of those by 10 and still get a whole number. Let's see. 40 divided by 10 is 4. 180 divided by 10 is 18. Those are both whole numbers. So that actually worked. Let's say, for some reason, I decided I wanted to divide the numerator and denominator each by 9. Dividing by 9 is a little harder than dividing by 10. I'm not going to do that in my head. I'm going to use the calculator. 180 divided by 9. That's okay. That's 20. But 40 divided by 9... Oh, that's not a whole number. So that doesn't result in a fraction, right? Because we said that a fraction must consist of a whole number numerator and a whole number denominator. So we can't do that. On the other hand, maybe we decided to divide both the numerator and denominator by 20. So 40 divided by 20 is 2. 180 divided by 20 is 9. That works out just fine. 40 over 180 is the same as 4 eighteenths is the same as 2 ninths. Right? Those are all equivalent. Hmm. This is going to cause a problem, right? Suppose we've just both done some arithmetic. My answer was 4 eighteenths, but yours was 6 twenty-sevenths. Did we get the same answer? That is, do our answers represent the same quantity? Or do we actually disagree on what the result of the arithmetic is? In general, in mathematics, our solution to something that can be written in many forms is to develop a standard form to write the solution in. For fractions, that standard form is called lowest terms. In lowest terms, the numerator and denominator of the fraction have no common factors, except for one, of course. And we find that if two fractions are equivalent, they will always have the same representation in lowest terms. The process of writing an expression in its standard form, 
So the process of writing a fraction in lowest terms is called simplifying. So to decide whether 4 eighteenths and 6 twenty-sevenths are equivalent, we need to simplify each one. To simplify 4 eighteenths, well, I'm going to look at all of the factors of 4. To find out, I'm going to go through and divide 4 by every number less than 4. That's going to be quick. Its factors are 1, 2, and 4. 3 is not a factor. Then I'm going to go through and say, which ones does it share with 18? Well, 1, of course, and 2, but not 4, so just 1 and 2. The largest of those is 2. So we would say that 2 is the greatest common factor, GCF, or greatest common divisor, GCD, of 4 and 18. As a shortcut, we can find the GCD of two numbers on the calculator. How? Well, we say math. We want to do something with numbers, so we go to num, scroll down until we find GCD, hit enter, type in the first number, comma, second number, hit enter, we find that the GCD of 4 and 18 is 2. So if we don't want to find the greatest common divisor by hand, we can use the calculator for it. Once we've done that, we'll divide both the numerator and denominator by the greatest common divisor. So we'll divide the numerator by 2, and the denominator also by 2 and we'll get numerator 2, denominator 9. Okay, so that's how we do this by hand. Next we're going to simplify 6 27ths and just to demonstrate another method, I'm going to demonstrate another method here. We could have used the first method. I'm just going to use the calculator for this. I'm just going to enter in parentheses, 6 divided by 27, math, 2 fraction, and I get 6 27ths equals 2 ninths. Notice, whenever we have the calculator convert something to a fraction, it always gives us the fraction in lowest terms. So, are 4 eighteenths and 6 twenty-sevenths equivalent? Yes. Since 4 eighteenths is equivalent to 2 ninths and 6 twenty-sevenths is also equivalent to 2 ninths, 4 eighteenths is equivalent to 6 twenty-sevenths.